few people realise that you actually didn't start out as a goalkeeper, did you? Yeah, I started as a striker. Yeah. And then sometimes I swapped between goal and striker. And um, I always love to get a striker, to become a striker. But um, somehow I ended up in goal. The management team of Germany seemed to suffer some criticism from certain quarters at times because of new techniques that they were using. Were you aware of this criticism? Yeah, we've been aware of this criticism, of course. But, uh, for example, um, I was used to the new techniques they brought in because um, here in, at Arsenal, the fitness coach's approach um, is uh, quite similar to the approach Jürgen Klinsmann brought in with his American fitness guys. Concentration is perhaps one of the great virtues of any goalkeeper. How do you keep concentration in a, in a game? I don't know how I keep it. I have it. I think uh, I'm gifted with that. Um, I think it's uh, very important um, to build that up in your school time because a school is the only place where you get it naturally. Mm. And when you end school, for probably at the age of 15 or 16, uh, you'll be missing two or three years and um, where you can still build up this uh, skill to, to build up your concentrational level. Now I'm going to take turn back to the World Cup itself. Right at the beginning of the tournament, one of the key areas of speculation was the new ball that Adidas had um, unveiled and introduced to the tournament. As a goalkeeper, how did you find that ball? You had to apply to this uh, swerving balls because uh, they're not coming straight at you anymore. In my opinion, it made the World Cup a little bit more attractive for the supporters and for the audience because a lot of goal had not been uh, scored if it wasn't due to the ball, uh, because it's so quick and swerving. So if you're, for example, on your right foot, all of a sudden it turns to your left. And uh, that means that uh, it embarrasses uh, sometimes the goalkeepers, but uh, makes it more attractive uh, for the people. Opening matches of World Cups are traditionally quite dull affairs, and they often feature great footballing upsets. As you and your teammates prepared to face Costa Rica, what thoughts dominated? We had to win this game, we knew, because uh, Costa Rica wasn't expected to be the strongest team in the world. And as a host nation, in the, in the, in the opening game, uh, you expected to win that, that we could sh uh, show a, a fine display as well, or on top of this, uh, played in our hands, because then we created some kind of uh, enthusiasm towards us from the crowd, because before the tournament everybody was quite skeptical. Everybody was saying, well, the Germans, uh, they can't play attractive football anymore, and uh, so um, they, they, they probably make it to the uh, knockout stages. But beyond that, we can't imagine that they will come to the final or to the semifinals. And, and as Germany got stronger, and with these very positive performances, were you aware as a squad of the effect you were having on the nation? Or were yeah. you shielded from it? Mm, we were, I think uh, we shielded ourselves a bit because uh, we didn't read papers a lot and uh, we didn't watch TV uh, apart from the uh, broadcasting of the games and um, so uh, I didn't really mm, notice the enthusiasm and the, the, the atmosphere amongst the, pop, uh, amongst the people and uh, I think for most of us it turned out to be quite uh, positive because uh, um, it didn't lift you up yeah, too early and uh, we felt it in the stadiums that we've created some uh, great uh, performances and that the people all of a sudden uh, were amazed by seeing us and by watching us as a team and uh, how we played. And uh, even after the World Cup a lot of people came to us and said, well, we are so grateful uh, to live in this time and uh, uh, having shared this big party. Thank you. And uh, it was a big compliment for us. Perhaps one of the most defining moments of um, the tournament was your quarterfinal battle, Germany's quarterfinal clash with Argentina, which ultimately, as a contest, was decided on a penalty shootout. Football's equivalent of a duel, if you like. And throughout your career, you've been a specialist to some extent at saving penalties. How do you prepare for such contests? You try to get all sort of information about the possible penalty takers from the opponents. Um, I asked a fellow coach uh, because I knew he, um, 
he's still maintaining a big information about uh, all sorts of penalty takers um, across the world. And I've asked him and uh, he gave me some data and um, so uh, our goalkeeping coach put that together on a little note and uh, he gave it to me before the penalty shootout. But there was one of the, the yeah. other sequences is that very emotional moment when Oliver Kahn is seen making a, a rather nice gesture to you, putting his arm round. What, what, can I ask, what did he say to you? Well, it was, uh, it was quite, uh, of course, emotional because everybody knew um, of our rivalry prior to the World Cup and he gave me some nice support, but I couldn't pay too much attention uh, to his words because I was uh, focusing already on the penalty shootout. And uh, yeah, then uh, I had to go to the goal. And uh. what we'd like to do now is to talk you through the pictures on the monitor uh, and take you directly back to um, that extraordinary match and the penalty shootout. When you're watching and starting to save the penalty, are you focused totally on the player? Are you looking at the ball? How do you? Do I focus on the player. Of course, but I can't uh, reveal too much here because uh, <laughs> I might be facing another penalty shootout. <laughs> I think you managed to go the right way for every penalty. Yeah. I was lucky on that day. And is trying to put the striker off like that uh, part of your technique? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you and the rival team's goalkeeper are isolated. You're very much on your own. Did you, as you walk past each other, did you have any words for each other? Did you talk? No, not at all. But I remember that uh, he has uh, checked me yeah. once. Yeah? And uh, it was just a spell of a moment, I, and I didn't really pay attention to that either. But uh, for a second, I said, "Huh? Is he crazy? Yeah? Why is he checking me?" And um, it was good for us that uh, their main goalkeeper wasn't playing anymore. You seem quite mesmerized by these pictures. I'm watching it the first time, you know, and of course, it uh, brings back some emotions. <laughs> and what's interesting is you were one of the first players, I think, down the tunnel at the end of the game and you didn't stay for the fight that developed afterwards. Yeah, I was quite happy on that because <laughs> normally I'd be a guy who uh, got involved into this fight. As a goalkeeper, you can't lose your aggressions uh, during the game. And uh, so I didn't realize that uh, there was a fight going on. And um, yeah, I met up with Oliver later on in the dressing room. We've been the first ones who came into the dressing room. And yeah, it was good like that. Looking back now at the summer of 2006, what does your World Cup experience mean to you and as a part of your career? I think it was the nicest part, uh, or the nicest time of my life anyway, because uh, around the World Cup, wherever we went, um, you always had the feeling that you can do everything, or you, c you could ask everybody for doing everything for you. If you just had said, uh, come on, it's for Germany, yeah, it's uh, for the German squad and um, because people were so enthusiastic and cheering us and uh, due to my private circumstances where we got a baby it's a perfect time and um, it's very unlikely uh, that I will enjoy such a nice time again in my life. Uh, playing, a, playing a World Cup as a host country is fantastic. Unfortunately we didn't win it but uh, the atmosphere couldn't have been better uh, even when we had won it. So uh, yeah, I'm very very grateful for this time.